Before the webinar begins, rename your Zoom name to your complete name and department and or affiliation so that we can easily identify you. Kindly mute your microphone when not in use. Next, switch on your video if your connectivity allows you. If you have questions with regards to the presentation, there will be an open forum right after. Please type it in the chat box or use the raise hand reaction button in Zoom and unmute yourself. The session is video recorded. Recordings will be made available at the Silliman Online University Learning website.
Heavenly Father, we come to you in this hour, asking for your guidance and protection to our virtual gathering today. We thank you for the gift of life, the gift of family, the gift of work, and the gift of friendship. We thank you for this great opportunity to bring us together in this session as brothers and sisters. Bless the committee, the facilitator, and the attendees of this gathering. May we continue to value and appreciate the true essence and meaning of life with the help of your grace. And as we go along to our discussion today, we humbly pray that you would deepen our understanding. Lord, enlighten us and give us wisdom every day. Forgive us for our shortcomings and remind us to always be mindful of the things we do in life. We offer our life and our decisions to you, O Lord. May this gathering today create a memorable experience and a fruitful outcome. We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, our Redeemer and our Savior. Amen. Good afternoon, everyone. Mayung Hapon Seliman, and welcome to the Seliman University Dr. Lao Free Computer Education. By the way, I am your moderator for this afternoon, John Synth Palama, and I would like to welcome everyone for today's webinar on the topic Internet Safety for Kids. Today, we will be learning the different tips and strategies to keep your kids safe from hackers predators, and cyber bullies. And allow me to introduce our resource speaker this afternoon. Our resource speaker this afternoon is a graduate of Bachelor of Science in Business Computer Application at Seliman University. She took her Diploma in Computer Science at the University of the Philippines, Open University. She finished two master's degree on Business Administration and Information Technology at Silliman University. She continued her doctorate degree in Education at the same university. She has a lot of experience that spans various fields of education, research, and innovation, and even information and communication technology. Because of this vast experience, she has been called to speak at various capacities in different subject matters. Despite all of these, education remains her passion. Today, she continued to make strides in education sector, working across all learning modalities for them to overcome the transition towards teaching in the new normal. She is a member of the faculty at the College of Computer Studies at Silliman University and also our very own Silliman University TBI manager. Ladies and gentlemen, let us all welcome our resource speaker this afternoon, no other than Mrs. Um, Janice Antoniette Forster. Good afternoon, friends. Good afternoon, colleagues at the Siliman Online University Learning. Thank you for that very generous introduction, Jan. <laughs> that was really not necessary, but nevertheless, I appreciate that. So, yes, this afternoon, I am tasked to talk about internet safety for kids. Now, I know that uh, some of you are here because maybe you have nephews or nie nieces that are enrolled in the online distance learning, uh, or maybe you will also be able to pick up, if you're a college student, you might be also able to pick up something that will allow you, that will open your minds, that will uh, make you realize that uh, these are the risks that are available online. No? So I hope that at the end of this session, you will um, keep this in mind 
the next time you open the internet. All right, so let's first discuss or, or, or differentiate or define what is the internet. So when, when people talk about the internet, you actually refer or think about it as the web or the cloud. But in reality, this one actually is a complex network of devices that communicate to one another to send your requests or data from one computer to another. So how else do you think does your email reach a particular person from across the globe? Or how do you think are two computers able to talk to each other online, real time, and all the other information, all the things that you have um, experienced on the internet. So uh, nowadays, whenever we talk about the internet, everything is already on the cloud. So um, when you take pictures um, using your phone, which is also connected to the internet, automatically those information is hosted online or stored in a, in a cloud um, service. Uh, all the emails that you actually send or submit all those documents, all those videos that you post online. So unfortunately, as mentioned here or stated here on my slide, this means you never know where your email attached files or other data is being stored. And this means that it could be vulnerable to uh, other people who have bad intentions or have who have interest about the data that you actually send via the internet. So unfortunately, um, there are there are some countries that have less stringent data protection and privacy laws than others. So that's why later on I will also be sharing with you what do we have in the Philippines as far as uh, cyber uh, laws are concerned. So let's first dis discuss cyber safety. So because we're talking about online safety, um, what do you mean when you say cyber safety? So it's the process of using the services and the resources of the internet in a safe and secure manner. So it's not like I'm going to tell you not to use Facebook anymore or not to post your pictures on Instagram. It's only a matter of knowing um, the risks involved so that you can protect yourself. Uh, what should you not do and do? No? So uh, it's uh, a dangerous place, uh, place out there, both online and offline. So. Uh, an ounce of prevention is always a pound of cure. So, okay, so as you can see here, um, you have different types of things, no? The combination of the safety concerns of the physical world and the new risks presented in the virtual world complicate the safety concerns you face when, de when dealing with the internet. So you might, um, find yourself with a damaged phone or a stolen one, a damaged laptop. So where do you have that fixed? What happens when someone steals your phone? No, and remember that uh, when someone steals your phone, you have your SIM inside and there are one-time pins that are normally sent to your SIM. Um, your photos there that are stored on that particular device are going to be at risk. So this thieves uh, kidnapping, um, uh, uh, these thieves, these uh, instances of having any material possessions um, getting destroyed are actually normal circumstances, but it, the complication is added because you have other important information that are stored in that particular device. So the number of people who can be a threat to you exponentially increases as well because of the population of internet users. So if, for example, if you feel uh, that you're not safe because you have to go from your house to the department store or from your house to your office or from your house to your school, all the more if you talk about the internet because we have a lot, okay, we have the whole world as internet users. And that means to say that, uh, the number of people, um, good and bad, also increases exponentially. So this information isn't meant to scare you, as what I mentioned earlier, but it's only intended to introduce you to potential threats and ways to protect yourself from these threats. 
So as uh, what we uh, know already, awareness is power. So the greater your awareness, the greater is your power. No? Because then you know how to combat these problems. So in the Philippines, and I mentioned this earlier, we have the Cyber Crime Prevention Act of 2012, and we actually call this the Republic Act or RA number 10175. And this was only approved on September 12, 2012. Now, unfortunately, just like any laws, and allow me to say this, just like any laws in the Philippines, there are always loopholes. And so here, as uh, mentioned, uh, its original goal was to penalize acts like cyber sex, child pornography, identity theft, and unsolicited electronic communication in the country. However, as what you will later realize uh, in my next few slides, there are now many other criminal offenses that can be done if you are uh, going online or if you are using uh, devices and the internet. So you're actually making yourself vulnerable to this. Now, I just want um, to, I feel like this is a topic that is very close to my heart, not only because I'm also a board of trustee at the Philippine E-Learning Society, but I can see a lot of parents who have children who knows how to use the, uh, the internet and who knows how to use the gadget better than their parents. And so how can they, these kids be guided by adults if the adults themselves do not know these risks. So we allow them to continue uh, posting videos, posting whatever they want to post online because we do not know the dangers that are out there. Now, so um, in fact, because the young generation are now growing with uh, the internet and the technology, um, you know, the time when, when they were born, the technology was already there. It feels like, uh, they probably feel like it's uh, very normal and uh, they are so open to posting whatever and, um, you know, without thinking of the possible risk and dangers. Now, so this is an example of an Australian man fired for Pokemon Go. Uh, it's actually a Facebook rant. So as you can see here, there are details and I have included the link to this post. Um, he actually... Um, said something, you can't F catch Pokemon in this piece of FS country. So things like this are very common nowadays. When you are angry, you post something online and it becomes a public um, post, or sometimes it may not be public, but who knows who are in your Facebook group. And this can easily be screenshot and shared to other people. And, and then of course, uh, you know, uh, can, you can just imagine what will happen if uh, you can just imagine what will happen if um, if other people will will see your post. Okay, and uh, so here, social media actually is becoming a deciding factor in your career. So nowadays, it's not only that uh, your employers will look at your um, LinkedIn. No, so it will also look at your Facebook posts, your Twitter and Instagram. So this will give them a sense of who you are as a person and not the professional person who submits their very nice resume. No, because sometimes who you really are and what you really are is divulged on your posts on the social media. So as you can see here, I have um, a screenshot of eight people who committed murder and then bragged about it in, on Facebook. So unfortunately, the thing here is that not a lot of people are aware that whenever we post something on Facebook, um, you are actually exposing yourself to other people other than your close friends, uh, especially because when we have friends or quote unquote on Facebook, we don't really verify whether these people are legit or these people are really our friends or if these people are just using someone else's face or name you know, or email account or if they already have the username and password of someone else. So um, you're actually exposing your personality, your behavior, your attitude to these um, people. Uh, so when, when you visit a site, the data is transmitted between the client and the server. 
allowing you to interact with others and or access content like the web pages, the code in pages that perform some function, online apps, file sharing, online games, and so on. So everything is interconnected. No? And that's something not a lot of people understand. Um, it's actually easy to just go to one app and be able to open another, you know, just check, um, go to your email address or email account, for instance, to be able to access all the other logins that you have in your app, other apps. So, so these are some of the common online threats that you might face in doing this. So one is personal safety issues, and this includes cyber stalking, cyber bullying, online predators. And I hope that the, the adults here would be able to guide the young ones. So I hope that you will get or pick up something from this talk. And then, of course, you have the information security issues, phishing, identity theft, and scams. I will give examples of these later. And then you have the usual computer threats, which I do not want to discuss too much because someone else is actually um, assigned to talk about viruses and such things and other malicious software. So, but I will just um, very quickly talk about this uh, just for for be just because it's part of the threats that you can find online but uh yeah these things you probably learn in school and so i'm that's also another reason why i'm not going to talk about it any farther and then you have content issues this means obscene or offensive content that our kids you know, uh, as early as when they're elementary if they are not guided properly they will actually be able to access them and of course that will affect their psychological and um, you know um, psychological um, state now so what is a cyber criminal so we are already aware of a, a normal criminal someone who does bad things uh, physically but a person a cyber, a, a cyber criminal is a person uh, the, who conducts some form of illegal activity but this time using computers and other digital technology such as the internet so they may use computer expertise knowledge of human behavior that means manipulating people to divulge more information or manipulating people to send uh, photos you no know, or give passwords and addresses etc or even bullying and a variety of tools and services to achieve his or her goal so it may not the harm that a cyber criminal may do on someone may no longer be physical but also min mental also the entire persona you no know, because you can actually destroy a person by doing it online and uh, once you will see it is actually larger than just saying it in front of your colleagues or friends or classmates you no know? so it's like the whole world will actually see um, the bad things that other people will say about you now, the kinds of crimes a cyber criminal may involve in can include hacking, identity theft, online scams and fraud, creating and disseminating malware, or attacks on, on computer systems and sites. So this one is uh, cyber stalking. So you probably understand what is stalking, right? Um, anyone here, uh, or can you chat? What is your what is the first thing that comes into your mind when you say stalking? You are stalking me, no? So like if you have a suitor, for example, and your suitor will start stalking you, how do they do that without uh, outside of the internet? Uh, you can chat if you have any idea. Dear participants, I have 98 participants. So can you tell me, can you chat on the chat box? What is the first thing that comes into your mind when you um, first hear the word cyber stalking without looking at my slides? Following the person around, yes, that's right. Knowing his or her plans, no? What else? Thank you for that, Jubel. Obsessed, lies, that's right. So when you are obsessed, you want to know, you want to watch the person do things, no? So you will follow him or her around. You will want to do what is he or she up to. Uh, you want to check out the activities of the person that's correct no because uh, online no so if if you're if you're doing this face to face it means following the person physically 
no, or going to someone else's house and, you know, peeking through the window or through wherever, no, uh, just to find out um, what that person is doing. But can you imagine what happens online? Now, using, the so using social media, we post um, information about what we're doing, where we are, what you're eating. And so anyone who has bad intentions about you would just find out where you are at that specific moment. So I, oh, they're on vacation. So that means I could actually go to their house. No one is there and sell and steal uh, things, right? So you can just imagine the risks. So if, if for example, um, a person wants to know who your boyfriend is or who your friends are, now because I have bad intentions about you, I'm going to spread, spread bad rumors about you, then that will be very easy when you do cyber stalking. So, just to set the definition, cyber stalking is stalking or harassment carried over uh, the internet. So imagine uh, doing the physical stalking in a grander scale. No, so it might target individuals, groups, or even organizations and can take different forms, including slander, defamation, and threats. So uh, I think I have it in one of my slides later on about a per. Uh, uh, well, a known actor in the Philippines who just paid one billion because of uh, this. No, so motives may be maybe to control or intimidate the victim, or to gather information for use in other crimes like identity theft or offline stalking. So, for example, I want to know. Um, I, I want to stalk because I want to find out when when you were born. So I'm going to look at your Facebook account, see. And look for that picture where you said, uh, where your friends would start saying happy birthday. And so everyone will already be able to, to, to know when your birthday is. So those are the risks. Also, um, as you can see here, there's actually an infographic that 80% of robbers check Twitter, Facebook, Google Street View. So for example, um, I think I have it here also. Um, Aside from the fact that I that I mentioned you, uh, aside from what I mentioned to you earlier, 70% uh, of employers are snooping candidate social media profiles. So it's not only the basis for firing you, but sometimes it's also the reason why you are not accepted by that particular employer in the first place. Maybe you have photos of you uh, very being very drunk at some point, or maybe you were uh, talking bad about one of the heads of the company, or maybe you're talking about, about the company itself. So these things now can really affect you. So here you have 11 reasons to reject a candidate based on social media. And so it's not only uh, in the past, uh, your employers would only look at your school credentials or your resume. This time they will also look at your public posts or posts that you are not very careful who you're sharing it with. So the lesson is do not be too quick to accept a friend request. So you might also need to advise this to the young kids in elementary because some of them already have Facebook account as early as some, no, as early as when they were born, they already have a Facebook account. So have you have to be very careful who you are accepting as a friend. Try to verify if you know that you have already been communicating with that person before on Facebook and there's another Facebook request using his or her name, you need to verify is this a new account? Is still this you? No, because I remember before I had friends who's, uh, who received uh, messages from their friends, quote unquote, and uh, asking for money or asking to borrow money, but in reality, they are not them anymore. So that's a case of identity theft. And of course, cyber criminal. So here you have criminals use social media and choosing their victims. So as what I mentioned earlier, if you keep on posting about your whereabouts, where you are at that specific moment, they can target you or they can target your home. No, and so imagine the risks there. Now, another um, thing is your identity theft. So identity theft is the act of stealing or leaving a deceased person's identity and using their information for the purpose of fraud. So by impersonating another person, they can conceal their own identity and use the information they have for, for personal gain. Now, imagine before pre-COVID, whenever you need to do something or process something, you have to do it personally. So at least they, they have another verification whether it's really you doing the processing uh, 
um, for example, processing loans. No, but nowadays when you apply for a loan, you can actually do it online. You no, know, one hundred percent online. When you apply for a new credit card. For instance, you can also do it online and everything is now electronic. So when it is electronic, it's easy to actually copy their signatures or to get to know most of all of the information about that person to be able to present yourself as someone else. So, yes, so the, uh, that is the, 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 the danger there. Okay, so um, what are the things that can be stolen from you, credit card or bank? Uh, number no? so that or what you what you say financial fraud fraud no um part of this is what i mentioned earlier whenever someone will 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 apply for a loan on your behalf no and it's actually without your permission so telephone or utility fraud i remember months ago there were reports of uh because i as i mentioned earlier whenever you do something or do financial transactions online now, they will send to you a one-time PIN that you will have to enter so that um, they could verify that it has your permission. But imagine if someone else will go to Globe and then say, I'm going to change my number. And this is me, no? This is Janice Forster. And then in the end, they will find out that it's not actually me, no? So it's posing uh, as someone else. Now, so right now, nowadays, because of COVID, all these things can actually be processed online. So imagine what can be done, no? So again, uh, the third one here is rent a house or apply for a mortgage, obtain government documents, provide identification in your name during arrest or get medical services, no? Um, I remember before someone, uh, there was on, on the news, someone actually could not borrow from SSS anymore because someone already borrowed under his name. So that was even pre-COVID, no? Imagine uh, the risk that are um, there right now. Now, this one is an example. It's in Filipino. I hope you all understand Filipino. It's a teacher who actually um, got buried in um, mortgage because he was not careful. He posted an ID on the social media and someone used that social media, uh, that, that, that ID uh, posted on social media to to apply for a loan. And so he only found out about it when it was already being deducted from his salary. And so this is just one example of those unfortunate events you know, because we, we are not careful about sharing information online. So there's already a wide uh, warning about this, especially during COVID. There was actually a study that during COVID in the Philippines, and not only in the Philippines, this is happening. This is happening all around the world. Um, there's actually um, worldwide or nationwide warning about uh, con artists using the name of a PN PNP shift in this case here. No? But there are actually also other warnings um, of uh, similar instances. No? So um, that's identity theft. Now, this one is another uh, website that uh, shows fake emails on Netflix billing information are circulating in the Philippines. So you might receive an email, uh, just like sometimes you receive an email posing to be a bank, but actually it's, it did not come from the bank. They only send you an email very similar to the logo, the color combination, the font being used by uh, this very well-known um, financial organizations. And they will use that uh, to, uh, to do some criminal acts. Now, games can actually also uh, collect information or data about you. No? So sometimes they use it only for advertisements or only to enhance their program, but it can actually be bought or it can actually be stolen from them. And that's the danger there. So uh, nowadays, whenever we use our phone, we use biometrics, uh, but we also do that when you when when we play with these games, no? Like for example, on Facebook, there are these very small types of games, sometimes silly games, that would ask us to log into our Facebook account and provide our password, and then they will actually study um, part of your personal information or profile on Facebook, and they will give you some um, some predictions or some funny. Um, Trans transform your faces into like who you will look or what you will look like 20 years, 30 years from now, those are actually getting information from you. 
no, or about you. So biometrics, precise location of your devices, your internet provider, the number of hours you spend on games, this information they can use to enhance their own applications. It's a marketing tool, but as I said, it can also be used against you and uh, you know, it can be sold by other companies who might use it for something else. Now, also the danger that our kids are facing at the moment is cyberbullying. And as I mentioned, if you bully someone face to face, it's like you're only bullied by a group of friends or probably your entire classmates or uh, yeah, your, enti your entire classmates will see you being bullied or the entire campus. But this time it's different no? because it's the entire users online no? and that makes it more painful and more difficult to accept for some kids. That's why there are kids who actually commit suicide because of cyberbullying. So cyberbullying is bullying that takes place over digital devices like cell phones, computers, and tablets. Now, so if you're a victim, um, some some kids will not actually see or understand what it is. No, but you need to explain this to the young people. No, if you are um, a sister or a brother of someone younger who is not very familiar, who's not understanding what it's what their classmates or friends are doing. Bullying is repetitious, unwanted, aggressive behavior that involves a real or per perceived power imbalance. So both kids who are bullied and those who bully actually will develop serious lasting problems and they both need help. You know? And uh, the, the issue here is the one being bullied is the one who loses um, more. So as you can see here, you have a lot of um, suicides and it's actually rising in number because especially if the parents are not monitoring what is happening in the social account, social media accounts of their kids. So bullying or cyber bullying can be connected to any type, uh, including physical bullying, emotional bullying, cyber bullying and sexting or circulating suggestive or nude photos or messages about a person. Okay, and uh, I know that most of you are adults here, but I, I know that you know what I mean. Uh, there are a lot of uh, people who are not uh, very careful about where they store their supposedly personal um, photos of themselves or their partner. And uh, unfortunately, it went to the wrong hands and they are being bullied. No, and it's not only about that. It's also about your size, about your facial features. The same thing as what was happening before. Only this time it's escalated because you have more audience and because it's being done online. Now here, Microsoft study finds that four in 10 consumers in Asia Pacific involved in are involved in bullying incidents. Okay, and that's really sad. Okay, now and it actually became worse you know, during the pandemic because not a lot of people are doing anything else except facing the computers or facing their phones. So these are four categories of um, what we call digital civility research that was conducted on civility, safety, and interaction online in 2021. One is reputational. That means doxing or damage to personal or professional reputations. Behavioral, that means being treated meanly, experiencing trolling, online harassment or bullying, encountering hate speech and microaggressions. Sexual, that means sending or receiving unwanted sexting messages and making sexual solicitations, receiving unwanted sexual attention and being a victim of extortion or non-consensual pornography. And number four is personal or intrusive. That means being an, the target of unwanted contract, experiencing discrimination, swatting, misogyny, exposure to extremist content or recruiting or falling victim to hoaxes, scams or fraud. Now, so on top of that, you have online predators. Now, these are individuals who commit uh, child sexual abuse that begins or takes place on the internet. Unfortunately, we are not so careful about this. Now, uh, sometimes we post pictures of kids that are wearing only underwear or, you know, there, it may not mean anything to us, but for pedophiles, it's, it's actually an opportunity, a window for them to let their imaginations flow. So, 
So here, when children go online, they have direct and immediate access to friends, family, and complete strangers, which can put unsuspecting children at great risk. So maybe we could um, advise our uh, young brothers and sisters or nephews and nieces to be careful about what they post, uh, to know who are their friends and make sure that they are really friends and not strangers. And um, yeah, and be more careful about how they look like and how they dance, especially like uh, in front of apps like TikTok. No? So here, do you know where your child's image is for the file sharing photos from parents' social media accounts? I have seen a lot of websites wherein parents are so shocked over uh, about seeing the the pictures of their of their family members or their, their kids um, shared on these um, sites that are not supposed to be that are not supposed to be there because it's stolen by pedophiles or being sold to pedophiles. So here it says TikTok is a pedophile magnet and is unsafe for kids, warns cybersecurity. Unfortunately, sometimes we follow what we see online and uh, the grinding and, you know, the showing of tongue whenever you dance is not so nice to see and not really something admirable when you see that being done by our young kids. It's actually a pity that they are not being guided very well. Okay, so everyday pictures of children in a sex sexualized content is what I mentioned earlier. So you don't need to be a computer expert to protect yourself. So you only need to do, what you need to do is only to use the tools and resources that experts have provided. So there are actually a number of features that are provided that are already there. Like for example, on Facebook, you can actually um, create groups so that whenever you post something, you know who you are sharing it with. You no, know? And you just have to understand that public means public, meaning anyone even outside of your circle can actually see those posts. You no, know? So there are settings that you can actually control who can see you. Is it friends of friends you No, know? or, or is it only your friends? You no, know? uh, You can also control your hardware and your software. There are software available that can prevent and attacked, protect your privacy, enhance your security, and or detect and remove anything affecting or infect, infecting your system. And that includes uh, viruses. So you don't need to know everything about computers, but you should know what others have developed to protect you. No? So like, for example, when you are um, downloading a particular app, you have to read the terms and conditions very well. Um, you have to know what do they do about the data that they collect from you? Where does it go? Is it protected? Is it stored locally in your device or is it somewhere out there? No, so pay attention to what's out there. Stay aware of online threats. Uh, pay attention to what is the car what the current threats are. So you can identify if there are issues that could concern you. Like for example, um, a new Facebook setting because they have uploaded or improved their terms and conditions or a particular vulnerability that needs, needs you to update a system. Okay, now you also have to understand that not all information that you see online is valid and correct. So while the internet is a resource of incredible information, there's also a lot of garbage online. No one is actually manning or managing the internet. Even when you use the internet as your or any article that you see online as your basis for submitting your project or those reviews that you see about the product online, it should not be a basis for buying a particular product because these things can be made up. No, And so um, you have to understand this things very well so that you don't trust everything that you see online. Okay, so just like, for example, this one, you must have um, experienced or you must have felt bad about a person because he or she died, but actually it's not true. No, and this had happened many times. This one is in Chongdi. Do you know in Chongdi? Actually, I'm not very familiar to, uh, with him, but uh, I have seen his name many times. No, um, Anyone here who knows En Chong Di? Okay, can you raise your hand if you uh, you know? Yes. Okay, three participants out of 106 participants, eight. Okay, the numbers are rising. So that's good. You know En Chong Di. 
Now, he actually was slapped with a 1 billion cyber libel case just recently because of the things that he posted online. So you see, these actors are very, um, you know, they are very influ influential. So whatever they post, most people, especially those who are not so educated and who do not verify information, they believe what other people would post right away without verifying. And so that's why he had to pay 1 billion pesos. So think before you click. Now, a major risk when using the internet can be the links that you click or the links that you share. So if you see something that is being shared by some of your friends or acquaintances online, read it first, make sure that there's actually a legit uh, reference for that, um, whatever information to be claimed and do not share it right away because the moment you share it, it's like you're also sharing it with your own circle of friends and most likely some of these friends also trust you to only share what's uh, legit or correct. So that's why you have to be very careful. And sometimes these links can ask, actually be also a a, mal a malware so that uh, you know it can get information about you or it will automatically send malicious content to your friends, etc., etc., etc. So I guess you know what a hyperlink or a link is, no? but sometimes it's the one that will allow you to open a new document or uh, create a new document document, open a web page, download a program or a file, run a code or send an email, and sometimes that is done without you knowing. So be very careful. So avoid clicking on pop-up ads or links that seem su suspicious. Whenever you receive something on your messenger and you are not sure because it's not so clear in the description about its content, what it is, so ask your friend first, what is this? No, without clicking it yet. No, so if it is dubious, do not click any of these links. If you feel the link came from a known source, uh, such as your bank or a store that you go and shop at, go to the site directly with your browser rather than using the link. So that's actually what you call phishing. So what happens is that you receive emails from your banks or from your credit card companies or even from any from, from your school. No, that's actually very uh, uh, that's actually possible, no? and they could actually follow the font, the, the color theme, and um, the logo, etc., which make, would sometimes make you feel like it's really from a legit source, and sometimes it will ask information from you, like your username and your password, and then in reality, you'll find out afterwards it's not actually the official uh, website or the official email account of that particular entity, so you have to be very careful, in, inspect most links by hovering your mouse over it first. And so as you can see here, don't click pop-ups warning your system is at risk. No, so sometimes the you see that your system is at risk. Uh, it's actually, it actually has a virus. Now you see that sometimes when you go to a particular website, do not trust that. No, you better trust uh, your antivirus software. You make sure that it is updated, you run it, and so that you could check if your computer is indeed infected. Now, so privacy. So when you visit a site, save a file or provide information online, you should be secure in the knowledge that only you and authorized users have access to it. No, and so unfortunately that's not the case. If you're using a computer that is not yours or that is publicly owned, you have to be very careful about that. When you're connected to the internet that is also public, um, the admin can actually uh, look into the sites where you went and those information that you provided. So you have to be very careful about that as well. No, so as mentioned earlier, online gaming may be used to get private information. I think this is a duplicate and that they're collecting information about you. Uh, here, no, the, the woman actually believed that you know, the, this woman in this um, article showed a lot of money on on her social media account, and that actually led to home robbery. So, you when you use the internet, you should take some time thinking about the level of privacy you expect from different sites, how the information you post online is used, and who can see where you go and what's stored. So, when you type in especially information such as your credit card number, your bank account number, you have to make sure that the website you're visiting or that you're visited, you have visited is secured. So, you can usually see the lock icon on the URL. 
that's one way to know. And read the terms of use and the privacy policy as well. Now, tra tracking cookies may be stored on your computer as a means of monitoring the sites you visit. Search engines may store information on your searches. And this explains why when you go to Lazada or Shopee, you search for a particular item. When you go back to Facebook, Facebook will actually give you ads in relation to that item that you searched on your Lazada or Shopee account. So, and that's actually tracking your, um, your marketing or your buying behavior. But yeah, just be careful that, that they're doing that on a site that you trust. Um, online surveys may be used to get you to provide details about shopping habits, etc. And sometimes it's harmless, but just be careful. Now, often some of the most personal bits of information are facts that we posted about ourselves. So be careful about posting your birth of uh, date of birth, your address, your phone number, where you work or go to school and other personal details online, because that can expose your private life to strangers. I could not I emphasize this enough. So some the same applies to information in profiles, online resumes and, and albums, which should be set so that only those you trust can access it. No, and uh, yeah, that's why I don't just accept anyone on Facebook without knowing who he or she is. Now, so who has ownership? Just because you posted something, it doesn't mean it's necessarily yours. The moment you post it online for the public to see or for your friends to see, it becomes a public uh, in public information. It becomes, it can easily be accessed by anyone. So the reviews and feedback you give may become the property of the site or blog that you responded to. Now, especially if you're sharing political views or you're talking bad about your family members or a friend that you're so angry at, you have to be very careful because, uh, uh, well, in Chong Di, no? you know what happened to him. Okay, so the terms of service will explain your rights and will let you know whether you retain ownership of your intellectual property, transfer it to them, or allow them to use it. Okay, so find out where your files are stored. Okay, I think I already mentioned this earlier. So I guess at this point, uh, and before I end my presentation, I would um, be very happy if you could participate to this quiz. This is not graded, so please uh, log in to your to your Koan Chrome or to your browser and go to www.kahoot.it. I'll give a very short uh, evaluation before I end my talk with like 10 or so number of slides. Okay, can you go there and then I'll share with you. Okay, can you go to kahoot.it and type in this game pin, 7580130. As much as possible, just put your first name. Now, anyway, it's just the first few weeks of classes. I could not probably remember this anymore, and this is not graded, so don't worry about it. This is just for fun. And just to know if you were listening to me in the first few part of my slides and talk, and uh, let's just enjoy this. So there are 98 participants, so I'm expecting at least 50% of that to join. I'll wait for you to create your own name first. Okay, I'm waiting for more. There are only 20 um, participants at the moment, 23. Can we make it to 50 at least? So it will be more fun. Twenty-eight. We only need twenty-one more. And by the way, thank you for spending the Saturday afternoon with me. I'm glad that you don't have classes uh, or that you don't have anything else to do to be able to join me this afternoon. Thank you so much. 
Okay, 17 more. 15 more. Twelve more. Sige na guys. Come on. I'm going to be giving you 4.0 if you top this quiz. I'm just kidding. <laughs> or I will give you 1,000 worth of load if you top this for those who are not in my class. But of course, I'm just kidding. Okay, 11 more. Thank you for participating. 10 more. 9 more. Eight more. Seven more. Five more. Kamay na lang jet class. Four more. Okay, there are 100 participants at the moment. I'm hoping at least 50% of that will join this activity. If there's more, all the merrier. All right. See, Steve is here. <laughs> Very obvious. Steve needs to top this quiz. Okay, let's start. Okay, we have 52 participants right now. That's good enough. Okay, first question. Just have to choose the best answer on your device. What is the process of using the services and resources of the internet in a safe and secure manner? Okay, answer now. There's actually a timer on the left side of your screen. And right now, there are 26 and counting answers. Make sure that you're able to answer before the time stops. All right. The answer is cyber safety. 29 actually got it correctly. Thank you so much. Let's move on to the next one. Okay, baby girl is uh, has actually the highest score. And this also depends on the fastest way you answer the questions. Okay, next. The Cyber Crime Prevention Act of 2020, uh, 2012 is also known as Republic Act number. What do you think is the answer? Just choose the corresponding color on your screen. And the timer is almost up to one zero. All right, the correct answer is RA10175 and 38 of you got it correctly. Thank you. That means you are listening to me and this time it's Joseph who has the highest score. So as I said, it has to do also with the uh, number of mi minutes or seconds that you actually press the right answer right away. Next one. There are only six questions. We are on the third one. Okay, which is not a personal safety issue? One, cyber stalking. Second, cyber bullying. Third, online predators. Fourth, viruses. Time is almost up. Three, two, one, zero. The correct answer is, of course, viruses. And 44 of you got that correctly. That's actually a very good number. Thank you. And this time, it's still Joseph who's leading. Okay, thank you so much. Followed by K, C, G, and then B. Okay. okay. Fourth question. A person who is a person who conducts some illegal form of illegal activity using the computers or other digital technology? The answer is... And the countdown is ticking. Eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. The answer is... Cyber criminal and... 46 of you got it correctly. Wow, my participants are actually very intelligent. And it's still Joseph leading the score, followed by KCG and Kim. Thank you. Let's move on to the fifth out of six question. 
the act of stealing a living or deceased person's identity and using their information for the purpose of fraud? And the correct answer is A. Scams Yellow Identity Theft Blue Phishing Green Hacking 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, and 0. And actually, 46 of you got it correctly. And the highest scorer is still Joseph. Very good, Joseph, followed by B and Kim. So I seem to see the same names over and over again. Okay, last question, true or false? Very easy. Cyber stalking might target individuals, groups, or even organizations. Fast, fast, fast. Okay, it seems like you actually answered faster this time. We still have five, four, three, two, one seconds. All right, the answer is, of course, true. Okay, and 52 of you got it correctly. Let's see who has the highest score. Oh, Napade. Okay, here. Now the answer, the highest score is Kim followed by B, followed by... No, this is not the highest. This is third to last. The number one is Joseph. Sorry for that. All right. Thank you so much. And uh, if you are brave, you can actually type in your name, real names on the chat. And uh, we'll take note of it. Okay. Thank you. Let's go back to our presentation. Thank you so much for participating. Uh, okay. Net is too slow that's okay you can try again next time thank you um yeah b kim and who was the third one maybe you can type in your name this is recorded so we can actually go back and uh, remember the names all right so on to my last few slides so here this is actually not um um as, as mentioned earlier it's not really fearing now that you will get uh, into trouble when you use the internet but actually more on having a peace of mind that if you know what are the okay. <laughs> if you know what are the risks then you can probably uh, have a peace of mind all right and so this one is already becoming a common site a lot of our kids are becoming addicted to the use of the technology and uh, admittedly, the scientists who make uh, apps are actually trying hard to make these applications addictive so that you will come back. So it's part of their marketing strategy. They're earning a lot about uh, the advertisements and all the income that you do while you are connected to that app. So, of course, they're going to try uh, the best they could to make it addictive so that it's not only like you downloading the app and then using it once and not come back, you have to come back over and over again. So that's the point. No? So uh, there's actually a psychological effect whenever we see a lot of likes or comments on whatever we post. So that actually encourages us to post even though it's not necessary. So that's the danger there. So don't forget, use your private privacy settings, check your, uh, that part of your, that part of your Facebook account no, which is usually the, the most number of participants here, I'm sure, is on Facebook. Be careful of what you post. No, so sometimes out of all the information that you think you could share, only a very small portion of that is really what your friends need to know. So you don't have to post everything. Don't post anything that you will regret later. And you always have to think before posting. You have to, or before sharing. So try to understand if it is true, if it is helpful, if it is inspiring, if it is necessary, and if it is kind. And if it answers all of that, then perhaps it is safe to share or to post. Okay, and also another guide that you might also think is um, who might be able to read this? No? So you have to try to analyze first who might be able to read your post. Am I posting this in anger? Because sometimes whenever we are angry, we say things we are not supposed to say. Uh, could someone feel disrespected if I'm going to post this online or 
if my friends will be able to see this posted. Am I revealing too much about myself? No, am I showing a bad side of myself? And could someone possibly misinterpret what you're saying? So you have to be careful about how you structure your words. Okay, now I already mentioned this earlier, but I want to emphasize this again. Be vigilant about what you're sharing online and become familiar with the consequences of such information sharing. Okay. Um, develop a strong password. Do not share it to anyone. Do not write it down. Do not keep it on your phone because if you keep it on your phone and your phone gets stolen, then it will be a lot easier to log into your bank accounts and other financial apps. Um, if you are bullied or if your younger brothers and sisters are bullied, you have to find a trusted adult to talk with. You have to monitor their online activity. You have to educate them. You have to advocate to intervene. No, do not just let them go online without monitoring what's happening or where they are actually logging in and then provide support. Okay, and um, this again, the questions for staying safe. And um, yeah, so there is actually YouTube for kids and these are some of the settings that you can do. Uh, you have Safari, you have you can turn off in-app purchases. Now, I remember there was this news wherein a kid actually ordered from online and the parents only found out about it when the item was already delivered. You know? And so this is another danger that we're um, exposing our kids to. Uh, they see us ordering from Shopee and Lazada and they might also uh, think, oh, well, I think I know already mommy's PIN you know, or password and they start ordering anything that they could see online. So you have to turn off in-app purchases. You disallow uploading or deleting of apps. You disable some of these uh, browsers and, um, you know, make those apps safe. No, now there are actually other apps and devices to monitor your kids online. And these are some of those apps, but there are many others online uh, that you can find, I'm sure. And again, the reminder about being smart when you are online. And these are my references. And with that, I'd like to end this talk. And thank you so much for spending this afternoon uh, with me and also for listening to one of Dr. Mariano Lau's free computer education program. Back to you, Dan. Thank you so much, Mom John. That was indeed informative and instructional at the same time. Of course, timely um, discussion this afternoon. I hope um, everyone were able to get that. So then shall we proceed to the next um, portion in the webinar? There you go. Okay, so at this juncture, um, our team here will be uh, sending you the link in the chat box for you to have and fill out the evaluation form for today's training. So yeah, for you to have your certificate, um, feel free to fill out the evaluation form. The link is already here in the chat box and yeah, you click that one. I also would love to invite everybody for the upcoming webinar scheduled at the SU Dr. Mariano Lau Free Computer Education Program every Saturday at exactly 2 p.m. So our list of um, discussion or topic will be posted at our Facebook page at the Dr. Mariano Lau Free Computer Education um, F page. At this moment, I'd like to ask everybody to um, open your camera for the photo opportunity together with our resource speaker.
we'll just wait for the others to turn on their camera. Okay. Let us all show our best smile for this afternoon. On a count of three, two, one, smile. Okay, next frame. Just keep on smiling. One, two, three, smile. Okay. Last frame. One, two, three, smile. Yeah, there you go. Thank you so much for attending our um, session this afternoon. We have your question in the chat box. How long can we get the certificate? Um, according to the team here, the certificate will be issued a lot um, within probably next week, right? 